This video is about the extended Euclidean algorithm. Please make sure you've watched the previous video about the Euclidean algorithm. If you haven't, it will be a lot harder to understand this video, while it shouldn't be that complicated. Alternatively, you could also have a quick look at a webpage that covers the same material. The link to this webpage and the link to the previous video are in the description of this video. What is the extended Euclidean algorithm? Well, it's an extension to the Euclidean algorithm, so it's the Euclidean algorithm with some extra things. Now what can we do with it? Well, using the extended Euclidean algorithm with input A and B, we can of course calculate the GCD of A and B, because we could already do that using the Euclidean algorithm. But now we can also calculate S and T, such that S times A plus T times B equals the GCD of A and B. Now you're probably wondering what S and T are and what this equation means. We're not going to discuss that in this video, but if you're interested, you should know that these are the coefficients of Bezout's identity. There's a link in the description of this video with more information. In the video about the Euclidean algorithm, we wanted to calculate the GCD of 13 and 56. Using the Euclidean algorithm, we constructed this table, and so we discovered that the GCD of 13 and 56 equals 1. In a previous video, we also showed this table. This is an overview of the different columns in the tables that we construct using the Euclidean algorithm. So as you can see, each table constructed using the Euclidean algorithm has four columns, A, B, Q and R. Now if we are using the extended Euclidean algorithm, the table will have more columns. For example, S1 and S2. Those are two new columns with values 1 and 0 on the first row of the table. Now let's add these columns to the table. And now let's add their values to the table, 1 and 0. But there's another column, S3, and it has the value S1 minus Q times S2, with S1, Q and S2 from the current row, which is in this case the first row of the table. Now let's add the column of S3 to the table. Now we have to calculate the value of S3. We can do that using S1 minus Q times S2, and that equals 1 minus 0 times 0 which equals 1. So the value of S3 on the first row of the table equals 1. Now there are three more columns, T1, T2 and T3. And their values are 0, 1 and T1 minus Q times T2, with T1, Q and T2 being the values from the current row, which is still the first row in this case. Now let's add T1, T2 and T3 to the table. Now let's add the values of T1 and T2 to the table, because they are just 0 and 1. Now note that S1 and S2 are 1 and 0, while T1 and T2 are 0 and 1. So those are actually swapped, don't confuse them. And now we're going to calculate T3. T3 equals T1 minus Q times T2 which equals 0 minus 0 times 1, which equals 0. So the value of T3 on the first row of the table equals 0. Now we need to calculate the values on the other rows of the table. Now the values of S1 and S2 on any other row than the first are the values of S2 and S3 from the previous row. So if we look at the values of S2 and S3 from the previous row, we can just copy them to the current row. Now the value of S3 equals S1 minus Q times S2, with S1 and Q and S2 being the values from the current row. And right now the current row is the second row, which means that S3 equals 0 minus 4 times 1, and that equals minus 4. Now the values of T1 and T2 on any other row than the first are just T2 and T3 from the previous row. So if you look at T2 and T3 from the previous row, we can just copy them to the current row. Now T3 is T1 minus Q times T2, with T1, Q and T2 from the current row. And right now, the current row is the second row, which means that T3 equals 1 minus 4 times 0, and that equals 1.
So now we are going to continue with the next two rows and we actually only have to look at this part of the table. So we start by copying the values of S2 and S3 from the previous row to this row. And then we are going to calculate S3 which is 13. And then we are going to copy the values of T2 and T3 from the previous row to this row. And now we are going to calculate T3 which is minus 3. And now for the next row we are going to copy the values of S2, S3, T2 and T3 to the current row which is now the fourth row so we're going to copy them from the third row to the fourth row and then we're going to calculate S3 and T3 now S3 equals minus 56 and T3 equals 13 but actually we don't need to calculate those because we know from the Euclidean algorithm that when R reaches 0 that we're done so there's no use in calculating S3 and T3 we also know from the Euclidean algorithm that when R reaches 0 that the answer of our GCD calculation is the absolute value on the same line where R equals 0. Now remember this slide. With the extended Euclidean algorithm with input A and B we can calculate the GCD of A and B but we can also calculate S and T such that S times A plus T times B equals the GCD of A and B. So where are our S and T? Well the S that we're looking for can be found in the column of S2 on the same line where R equals 0. And the T that we're looking for can be found in the column of T2 on the same line where R equals 0. Now if this is correct then the GCD of A and B should be equal to S times A plus T times B. So the GCD of 13 and 56 should be equal to S times A plus T times B. And S times A plus T times B equals 13 times 13 plus minus 3 times 56. And if you calculate this then you'll see that this equals 1 which is indeed our GCD that we found. So now we know that this is correct. So now we're done. When you see this table you'll see that there is a lot of information in it. You might think, how am I going to remember all of this stuff? Well first of all, you will never get a test asking you to write down this table. And second, this is just an overview that helps you creating tables for the extended Euclidean algorithm. When you have done this a couple of times, you will see that you will remember information from this table automatically. So don't focus too much on this table. Just practice a lot and you will remember. Besides, there's not that much information in a table. This part you already know from the Euclidean algorithm and these parts are just zeros and ones and these parts are just copying values from the previous row. So actually you only need to remember these parts and this is just 4 times the same equation with the only difference that if you're calculating S3 you're using S1 and S2 while if you're calculating T3 you're using T1 and T2. Another thing is that calculating S3 on the first row is actually a lot easier because S3 equals S1 minus Q times S2 that means that it equals 1 minus Q times 0 and of course Q times 0 is always 0 so S3 will always be 1 on the first row that means that it's a lot easier to construct the first row if you know that you only have to put down 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 and then the only thing left that you have to calculate on the first row is T3 now let's do another example Find S and T such that S times A plus T times B equals the GCD of A and B where A equals 168 and B equals 35. So in other words we have 168 S plus 35 T equals the GCD of 168 and 35. What are S and T? So we have an A of 168 and a B of 35. Now it would be useful to have an overview of all the columns on the right side of the screen such that we can create a table on the left side of the screen with all the columns. Now we start with the first row and of course we start by putting A and B into the table. So A equals 168 and B equals 35. Now we're going to calculate the quotient and the remainder. How many times does 35 fit into 168? Well the answer is 4 times because 4 times 35 equals 140. Now what's the remainder? That's the part that's left. So how much is left? 
Well, that is 168 minus 140, and that is 28. We could also have calculated the remainder by using 168 mod 35, that also equals 28. So the remainder equals 28. And now we're going to put all those ones and zeros into the table. So that is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And the only thing left that we need to calculate on the first row is T3. T3 equals T1 minus Q times T2. And that equals 0 minus 4 times 1. So T3 equals minus 4. And now we're going to add another row to the table. And we're going to copy all those values from the previous row that we can copy. So those are B, R, S2, S3, T2 and T3. And since 35 is 1 times 28 plus 7, we have a quotient of 1 and a remainder of 7. And S3 equals S1 minus Q times S2 and T3 equals T1 minus Q times T2. So we'll get an S3 of minus 1 and a T3 of 5. Now we're going to add another row to the table. And we're of course going to copy all those values from our previous row. And then you'll see that 7 fits exactly 4 times into 28 with no remainder. So we get a quotient of 4 and a remainder of 0. But wait, now we have a remainder of 0, which means that we're done. Because when r equals 0, the gcd is the absolute value of b on that row. And the s that we're looking for is the s2 in that row. And the t that we're looking for is the t2 on that row. So since r equals 0, we have found that the GCD of 168 and 35 equals 7, and the s that we're looking for equals minus 1, and the t that we're looking for equals 5. Now the assignment was to find an s and a t such that s times a plus t times b equals the GCD of a and b. So now we have to verify whether that's indeed the case with the s, t and GCD that we found. So let's try it. S times A plus T times B equals minus 1 times 168 plus 5 times 35. And that equals a minus 168 plus 175. And that equals 7, which is indeed the GCD that we found. So this seems to be correct, and now we're done. If you want to practice more examples, or if you don't want to practice at all, you can use a calculate. You can put in any two numbers and then you have to make sure that it's set to the extended Euclidean algorithm. And then you click on calculate. And then the output will appear below it. You can put in any two numbers. So if you put in big numbers, the table will look more like this. The link to this online calculator is in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please have a look at the description of this video for a link to the online calculator and for a link to a web page with the same information as this video. It can be useful to have an overview of everything that was covered in this video. And if you want to know more about the coefficients of Bezout's identity, there is also a link in the description to a web page with more information about that. Good luck and bye bye.